Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. Now this is a little bit of a bonus video because there's just so many things going on right now it's really hard to fit them all into our regular videos. Uh, so this is just focusing on a couple of the many jobs which are happening right now. But most of this video is going to be about the cabinetry, the joinery in the head, the bathroom of the boat and the installation of the deck prisms. The sort of glass things, prisms I guess, which are let into the deck and bring in outside light down into the interior of the boat. The first thing we're gonna see is Nick working on the cherry surface that goes around the basin in the head. in the head for quite a while now. Is it satisfying to finally get it to a point of nearly finished? <laughs> It'll be satisfying when it is finished, finished. <laughs> this makes me nervous, but I'm excited for it to all come together for sure. You mean you don't love varnishing? <laughs> I just feel like everything is nice, everything looks great, and then you're gonna put this thing on it. Yeah, I don't know, it freaks me out. Yeah, but the thing you put on it makes it look like 10 times better. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think this stuff seems to be pretty forgiving, so uh, I think it'll be, it'll be good. It's just hard for a perfectionist, I think. Yeah, and varnishing can be very stressful. Yeah, for sure. yeah. But no, I'm stoked. That first coat, though, is always most satisfying. Yeah, it's pretty nice. What about those faucets? Uh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked on the faucets. Uh -huh. We have been looking for a, for months, literally for months, but there's a lot of faucets out there, obviously. And we finally settled on one that just came in last week. It's gorgeous. It's going to be sad to stop talking about faucets every day. Well, we don't have to stop. <laughs> Language. <laughs> Daddy. Sorry, what the darn heck are you doing? <laughs> well, gall daggett, I'm keying up old varney so I can put new varnish on for the head. All the head cabinetry. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Why am I talking about this? <laughs> Since no one will ever see these, look yeah. at this shape. Yeah. <laughs> look at these shelves. <laughs> They're ridiculous. Look at this. You look like, um, what's the guitarist from Guns N' Roses? Dude, <laughs> you know I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> One of them would know. Erica? What? What's the name of the guitarist from Guns N' Roses with the curly Is hair? It, um, I don't even Motley know. Motley Crue. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no. no. That's not it. Oh my god, the guy with the top hat? Yeah. yeah. Top it's, hat, curly it's hair. Easy top? No. No. <laughs> That's another band name. What's up, George? What's up? It smells like you're painting primer. I am painting primer. On the settee hatches. That's right. That's awesome. Carry on, then. What are you doing, Cliff? I'm laying out for the planking in the cockpit. Now that the footwell is in? Now that the footwell is in, I'm glad I got you trained. Recognizing that this entire area is the cockpit. <laughs> this is the footwell. I had this no idea. Combing. I've been told 
and I call it this. We call this the bridge deck. Bridge deck. Well, because it's a bridge to go in yeah. the companionway. Most boats have some things like this. Anyway, I'm doing this layout to sort out a bunch of stuff before I do the actual milling and patterning. You know, I'm honored that I get to do so much in the cockpit realm. Oh yeah, bud. This is the part of the boat that Leo gets to stare at the most when he's out. It's well earned, Clifton. Thanks, Daddy. Hi, Erica. <laughs> Here's Johnny. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> down there to push it back up. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so annoying. Hey, uh, Patrick, what are we doing, bud? No big deal, just drilling a hole through a water impervious layer of the boat. Just for fun? Yeah. Are those the right words? Water impervious? That's Cool. No, right. I doubt it. <laughs> Nick says, no. no. <sighs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, do you measure where that was supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> I like how you know I'm joking and you still look panicked about it. <laughs> so messed up, dude. It's so messed up. Alright, make that hole bigger, dude. I freaking will, okay? Hurry up, dude. You know we're on a deadline. <laughs> Don't think about it. Just cut <laughs> it. <laughs> you shut your mouth, Nick. You shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. <laughs> That's fun. This is cool. Oh, dude. Now, in previous episodes, a few eagle-eyed viewers noticed that there were some uncorked butt joints in the deck planks uh, and wondered why that was. And the reason for that is these are the locations of the deck prisms. Because we knew there was gonna be a break in that plank there, we treated it like a butt joint and it was uh, taken into account with our butt layout that makes sure there aren't too many joints too close together. Uh, and by making that joint there, we were able to use shorter pieces of wood. To cut the openings for the deck prisms, first a rough hole is cut with a drill and a jigsaw, and then a series of router templates are used to get several different sized round rebates in the deck that the prism will fit into. After the template is first put on deck, generally a top guide router bit is used uh, with just a short cutting bit and that allows the template to actually be transferred into the deck even though it's a shallow cut. Then the template can be taken away which means the clamps can be removed and then the router can be run directly on the deck. Again using a top guide router bit or a top bearing router bit but with a longer cutter. Because the clamps aren't there, it allows us to use a bigger router uh, with a bigger motor uh, and a bigger bit, which takes less time and there's less wear on the tools. There are several different sizes of router template to match the different parts of the deck prism. There's the hole that goes all the way through the deck. There's a slightly larger hole which takes the diameter of the deck prism and creates a ledge for it to sit on. And finally, there's the template for the much wider but shallower hole that takes the bronze mounting ring. After all that, a 45 degree chamfer bit is used on the underside of the deck to create the nice chamfer which helps to spread the light around inside the boat a bit better. And then all of the freshly exposed wood is painted before the prism is installed.
go like half an inch, half an inch. Or just go. Well, Leo would probably explain this better than any of us could, but what's a deck prism do? Uh. I like this very simple topic and being like, only Leo could describe this. <laughs> well, you um, know that you could give him, you could give him Light beautiful. goes in like this, uh -huh. and then it goes out like that on the yeah. other side. Nice. So it's like a cool natural lighting thing. It radiates light. It's boat magic. Yeah. Cool. And do you have any blood in your stool? <laughs> <laughs> When the deck prisms actually get installed, we decided to use two different compounds. Uh, we're using a white cork compound called Boat Life, which is commonly used as a bedding compound. It does set in time, but it remains somewhat flexible uh, and remains relatively easy to remove if necessary. One of the reasons we're using that is just that it's readily available in white uh, and we want it to blend in with a paint because you can see that part of the bedding compound when you look down through the prism. The compound we're using under the mounting plate is TDS, Teak Deck Systems, which is the same stuff we've got in all of our corking seams. And we're using that because it matches everything else. It's very UV resistant and it sticks well to itself. So it'll stick to the uh, TDS that's already in the seams. Now deck prisms are actually a really, really old piece of technology. Uh, they come in a few different shapes and sizes. Uh, it used to be very common to see the sort of Toblerone shaped ones, which were rectangle uh, with a sort of Toblerone shape pointing down. Uh, you can also get kind of pyramid shaped ones. I think these sort of grapefruit juicer style ones we've got are the most effective at spreading light. But variations of the design have been in use for uh, centuries, I think. I've actually read about them being used a long time ago on cargo vessels uh, where there was a flammable cargo and the use of oil lamps was prohibited uh, because it was so dangerous. And so these were a way of allowing light to come into the space. It was also said that if a fire did start in the hold, it would actually be visible uh, through the deck prism from deck, so you'd be able to see it and hopefully do something about it.
While you're doing that, let's check a detail here. The slotted side rail, John. Do you know what that's for? That's for the... Well, why don't, why don't you tell the good viewers of Talia what... Uh... I mean, Patty definitely doesn't know. But, <laughs> uh, these are for uh, tabletop buttons. So basically, you can't attach the top of a countertop down directly with screws because it's too wide and it wants to move and it'll rip the screws apart or the wood will fall apart. So what you do is you make a mortise, a hole like this, and you attach it up to the bottom and that'll go into this hole. And that way, when it swells, it's able to slide in this hole. It'll make more sense when I'm actually putting Right, it. yeah, I realize that, but that's cool. I mean, we can see him now. It's exciting. It's pretty neat. But for now, you're putting the space frame on. Yeah. Nice, Nick! Yay! That was the daintiest little wiggle. <laughs> there you go, give it a... <laughs> Now, someone else can break this, <laughs> and I'm going to leave it. Now the head is looking beautiful. Uh, the next step is to get some fresh paint onto the bulkheads. Um, and actually there's been someone here who's been working with us for a little while, uh, who has been helping with finish work. She's a professional finish worker for many years, although she's now expanding her skill set. actually. Her name is Bailey, and uh, we're really happy to have her on the team. We're really happy to have her on the team, in fact, because uh, everyone here struggles a little bit with finish work, and uh, Bailey has uh, proved to be uh, very efficient and very meticulous. My name is Bailey and I am uh, doing some finish work right now. I graduated from the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building in the Marine Systems program this year, um, but I've been doing finish work on boats for a number of years, and that ranges from painting, varnish, um, anti-fouling. So in the head, um, I just painted the main bulkhead, so the wall that separates it from the salon and the uh, little piece of the wall right above the sink and I just got those uh, the first coat of paint so that the plumbing fixtures can be installed. Right now I'm just kind of filling little gaps in between the tongue and groove with a goop that is approved for below the water line. What are you putting the head in? I'm putting the uh... Oh. This little bad boy. The handy dandy, that's the speedometer. Good morning, Pat. Yeah. This, if you, oh, sorry. you gotta, oh, dude. <laughs> you gotta pump this up and that'll get the engine going. Oh yeah? yeah. Oh, that's the on switch. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> So we've got various tanks on the boat. We've got two diesel tanks, two fresh water tanks, and one black tank or wastewater tank. And for each of those tanks, it's pretty important to be able to see how full it is for obvious reasons. Now, installing a system to measure how full each tank is 
uh, comes with different complications and challenges in the case of each different tank. But the Blackwater tank in particular is really difficult. And that's because, sorry to be coarse, but it's full of such nasty, lumpy, horrible stuff uh, that that stuff can sort of clog up or obstruct any mechanical sender unit. And because the surface isn't slick and it can also stick to stuff, it can also obstruct the sending and receiving uh, of a sort of ultrasound or infrared style unit. So for the wastewater tank, we've gone with uh, a really low tech solution. And this is a really cool product that's actually made around here. Uh, and it's called the Tank Tender. Uh, they haven't sponsored us or anything, but it's something that Joe recommended. And it uses uh, pressurized air from a little pump in the unit uh, with a very small tube that goes into the tank. And I don't actually understand quite how it works yet, um, but I know that you pump it up, you open a little valve, and uh, based on the uh, air pressure in the tank, it'll tell you the volume of the tank, or rather, how full it is. It consumes no electricity and it has no moving parts inside the tank. And because it works by blowing air into the tank, it sort of automatically unclogs itself. So it seems like it's a really good solution for that type of tank. Well, the head looks just fantastic. Uh, can't wait to uh, test it out. Probably wait until we're in the water for that though. Uh, the deck prisms also look beautiful. It's so nice to get some natural light down below, although it's sort of hard to capture that on video. Now, although this episode's nearly finished, uh, there's so much coming up really soon. I've been working on carving the cove line uh, and the carving at either end of it and the cap rails. Uh, Zeal has been working on the uh, rudder and trim tab. Clifton is working laying deck planks in the cockpit. Joe and Erica are putting more exciting systems in the boat uh, and everyone else on the team is up to equally exciting stuff, not to mention uh, progress on the mast, the other spars and even the sails now. So the next few weeks and months are going to be really, really exciting. For now though, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work and we're able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.